Oh, no, man. I ran out of room in the garbage can to throw out all this expired food from 2015. Two years it's been sitting in there, and I think an animal got into it overnight. Oh, man. Oops. That was a total waste. Okay, going to make my MC4 connectors. Never plugged in that 100-watt panel uh, on the roof there. It's been sitting up there for about six months. These wire strippers right here, oh my god, these are godsend. I love these things. They make uh, wire stripping actually fun. Really sharp. I know it would make for a good video if I cut myself and started crying like a little girl. But I have Mickey Mouse band-aids now. Uh, so I'd be a big boy, big Mickey boy, and I won't cry. Oh, and look at that! Cutting it initially and then following up with these bad boy vice grip brand wire strippers, automatic wire strippers. These things are awesome. Okay, so we'll do the male MC4 connector and first. There's two sizes of these um, MC4 pins. The male is the longer one. Okay, so I just need to crimp it, put the wire on like that, and then crimp it right here. And I don't really have the right kind of crimper for this, but... Just doing a rough job here. I think it'll be adequate. By the way, this is a 10 gauge wire. Depending on your length, there's like calculators on the internet. It'll show you distance, how many uh, amps are going to pass through. I think 7 amps is about normal. A lot less with these flexible solar panels though. So anyway, this is completely adequate. It's only one foot that I'm going with this. Okay, cool. So I'll take the end, put it through there. That's supposed to pop. All right, nice click, and go ahead and screw it. Screw it good into shape. Just shape it up. There you go. Nice hand tight twist. There you go. MC4 connector. Uh, good job. Great job. See, this is quality. Quality crimps right there. Okay, guys, this crimping is really cramping my style. So I am going to reinforce it with a solder. It's going to be great. It's got a temperature uh, setting on there. I'm sure Tiffany wouldn't mind if I use the cutting board and uh, drop some solder on there, but uh, I'm gonna be a nice guy and use a paper towel. Oh, okay, that's flux. That oh, I really burnt myself, that fucking hurt. I think this is just wire, dude. Is this even solder? This isn't melting at all. I suck at soldering. Okay, I'm an idiot, that is flux, and then I think the other one is just straight up wire and I was just heating it and it was burning my hand. So I need to make a trip to Ace Hardware. All right, I'm just gonna ride my bike there. It's not far from here. My, my van's got projects in it right now. I'm just gonna undo this. All right, here we go. Oh, okay, on the bike, feels good. All right, let's go for a little bike ride. Doo -doo -doo. Ah, crap, man back tire. It's pretty flat. Shit. <laughs> Dude, this is great. I found a new feature of this bike here. So this is the cup holder, right? I just put it in there. <laughs> Dance free, baby. Now you guys can come with me. Now I've got friends on the road. <laughs> Whew, this is a workout, man. Uh, I should have put some air in this tire before I left. This is my exercise for today. Yeah, I was debating with myself, should I bring this bike on the trip? I mean, it is a little bit cumbersome. Every time I want to take a shower, I have to lower the bike rack, take the bike off and all that stuff. It's all dusty. But the thing is, I remember on my last trip, uh, I remember specifically Idaho Falls. I wouldn't have been able to check out Idaho Falls if I hadn't brought my bike. The bike, it just allows me to cover so much more territory. Uh, than just walking and you know what uh, it saves a bunch of money on parking too because I can park just outside of a busy city I want to check out and then hop on the bike park for free hop on the bike right into the town Ooh. okay cool got all these different types here uh, do I need a little or a lot I think I'll go for a lot just in case all right I got that solder the uh, checkout lady says, ooh, I like your shirt. It reminds me of, like I'm at the ocean. I was like, yeah, aloha. Oh my god, they're playing Blade Runner here. We just saw that the other day. We would have saved a lot of money going here. It's only like $6 for these movie tickets. I like that movie, but my god, it was like three times as long as it needed to be. It is. 
It's a little nice place to sit out here. Oh man, four dollars twenty-five cents for that. It's like a little tasty morsel. That's kind of secret price. That one actually stays. All right, well, just got the cables connected here. I got the perfect amount of wire here, two feet, and if I got any shorter, it wouldn't have reached. Hey guys, so I'm trying to measure the amperage that's coming out of this panel right here. I've watched about three different YouTube videos and <laughs> having difficulty figuring out all of these freaking settings. So far I've learned that, yeah, you need that the black one in the comm, the negative ground, and then DC, 10 amp is what I'm plugged into that goes in there and I know it's working because I hear a little bit of crackling so here we go so it looks like one amp I'm getting like right directly connected to the panel I mean it's a little bit overcast well yeah it's totally overcast right now one it looks like 1.1 amp can you guys verify do I am I using the correct settings on here to measure the amperage coming out of the panel Let's go ahead and measure these guys next. Let's see how far shot these are. Um, I decided to hook it right up to the solar charge controller right here. 1.48 amps. All right, so I measured all the panels individually. The first panel is my new panel. The second is the middle and the third is the one in the back. And then when I plug them all in, I get 4.7 amps and it could be fluctuating because of the cloudy uh, skies right now. But really, I mean, you're supposed to be getting that for one fucking panel, man. So these are incredibly inefficient. Okay, so I decided to wash the panels. You can see what a difference it makes. So here's one of the panels that I haven't finished. I did the other side. So you can make it, you can see it makes a difference here. It's like uh, polishing off some of the, I can feel it's a lot rougher here. So I think there's like some plastic coating that degraded in the sun. And I'm just kind of scraping that off with this slightly abrasive pad. I thought that possibly cleaning the panels might up the amperage, but no, it's at a 4.6 still. Another way to think about this is to convert it to watts. And watts are amps times volt. So volt is 12 volts and I'm getting 1.84 amps. So that translates 21 watts. These panels are rated at 100 watts, so I'm only getting 21 watts. So I'm getting about one fifth of what they should be delivering in power. Five amps is the norm, that's what people are getting. So five amps times 12 volts, and that is 60 watts. I'm still only getting a fraction of that. Okay, so today is the day that they are towing our RV where I'm living. We have to get the RV moved every eight months. So I gotta unhook everything, get ready for this tow. Big mess to clean up back there. It's just a little bit different in here, huh? Whoa, our yard got really big. Hey, what happened to my RV? It's way smaller, man. All right, so I'm gonna park over here down the road in a parking lot, park right by this guy, fellow RV dweller. Alrighty. Yeah, we got two spotters. God, what a mess. I have to clean all this up, straighten it out again. Oh, I hate doing this move. Oh, well, it's 4 p.m. I'm going to call it a day. That's enough uh, for me. I still need to straighten up this place. And uh, this was the one thing that was keeping me in the Bay Area. 
I had to get this out of the way before I could start my trip. So really, there's nothing holding me back at this point. I'm free! I need to spread my wings and fly out of this nest and drive up to my bro's house. And um, I just need to straighten everything. But man, what a day. Uh, yeah, the trailer, the guy saw it and he said, Oh my God, why aren't your wheels off the ground? You're bending your frame. So I hope I didn't do any damage there. But he helped me put some wood uh, blocks under the wheels. And uh, hopefully uh, it'll be a little bit more stable in here too. Yeah, it just takes about a good hour, hour and a half to get everything so that when you move, you're not going to have dishes fall out. Um, and yeah, I just have to clear all the surfaces and put it on the couch like you saw there. What a pain. Every eight months, we have to move out of our park like that. The reason is because there's they used to have a problem with uh, broken down trailers. And then people would just live in a pigsty here. So they make sure that you don't get flat tires and everything is in working order. So that's it for me, guys. I'm calling that a day.